The end of summer and the start of the new school year is just around the corner. For many parents, though, the question of safety will be on their minds as they send their children off to spend their days in the care of someone else. Now, I'm joined by Troy Lehman of Oatley Vigman and a member of the Personal Injury Alliance. Troy, what legal duties do teachers, principals, and school boards have to keep their students safe? The basic legal duty for all three, teachers, principals, and school boards, is to act like a careful and prudent parent. And the reason for that is because as parents, we don't really have a choice to send our kids to school. So we have an expectation that they'll be treated in the same way that we treat them as careful and prudent parents in terms of keeping them safe. With that in mind, are schools liable for any injury that is suffered by kids on school property? No. uh, Accidents do happen, as we all know, and, and sometimes no one is at fault. Sometimes kids are injured by other kids, and there's no school employees at fault. Liability only flows where you can establish that there's been a breach of the duty to act like a careful and prudent parent. And I can give you two examples to to illustrate uh, the difference between liability and no liability. So here's an example of a case where there'd be liability. Imagine it's it's gym time and you've got a teacher who's organizing a game of of indoor baseball uh, with wooden bats like bowling pins. And that teacher knows that the, the knobs are loose on the bats and sometimes they'll fly off and the, the bats will fly out of the batter's hands. But the teacher allows the feelers to stand really close to the batter, which he or she should have known was a bad idea. And the bat flies off and hits a student in the head, causing a severe brain injury. That's a case where there'd be liability. Uh, but if you've got a, a case where it's two kids um, in a recess where the principals establish a yard duty so they'll be appropriately supervised, but one kid picks up another and that kid falls onto the pavement suffering the same head injury, there is no liability on the school board there because it's just an accident and no no teacher or principal can be blamed. It's an interesting sort of teeter-totter on that one, though. I know I've fallen off the jungle gym numerous times with no effect, but uh, can you give us a couple examples of cases you've seen involving serious injuries at school? Our office was involved in a case a while back when TVs were big and, and heavy, the old tube-style TVs, and uh, an elementary-aged student was sent down to the AV room to get a TV off of a stand, push the stand, and the TV wasn't strapped down in any way, it fell off um, onto the head of the student, causing a very severe brain injury. And um, that is one example of a case where uh, the duty wasn't met. Now those TVs are, are strapped on to stands and probably aren't gotten by students. Mm-hmm. We've got another case um, involving a high school basketball game where there's very little distance between the baseline and the wall. And the school ba- board should have had thick mats on the wall given the short distance between baseline and wall, but it didn't. It had thin mats, the thinnest that were available, and there were gaps in them. And during a basketball game, our, our client gets a breakaway and he's pushed from behind by an opponent and ends up hitting the, the wall either on the thin mat or on the wall itself and suffers a severe brain injury and uh, the allegation in that case is that the school board should have recognized the danger and should have put thicker mats in this area where you should expect something like this to happen. And in cases like that along with many others that you guys deal with over at the Personal Injury Alliance what should parents do if their child is hurt at school? Sometimes it's a minor injury and it requires nothing more than ice or a a band-aid but if you've got a, a seriously injured child and that injury is going to impact their future that injury happens at school and there's any issue at all in relation to the the teacher's supervision or there's been something unsafe at the school. As a parent, you should be talking to a qualified personal injury lawyer. You did say that it is important to get a qualified personal injury lawyer. What qualifications should be considered when looking for just that? Well, you should look to see what the lawyer does, whether they're a general practitioner or whether they're someone who just does personal injury law. You should ask about whether they've got trial experience. You should look to see whether there's um, publications. Uh, For example, there's a Canadian lawyer magazine, which has ranked the 10 top personal injury firms in the country. And that's the kind of homework that you you really should be doing. Troy Lehman, a member of the PIA law firm, along with Oatley Vigamon Personal Injury Law, Uh, where can people go to find more information on what we've just talked about, whether it be safety at school or how to approach you guys if they are injured at school? Your listeners can can find more information on the PIA Law website, both about the firms of the PIA Law uh, and about this topic. And the website is PIALaw.ca. Troy, it's been a pleasure talking with you and shedding some light on this. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, it's that time of year. Kids are going off to to school, and let's just hope that uh, they all stay safe.